Hi guys, it's Debbie, time flies, another month has passed and so it's time to talk about everything I watched this month and of course I'd love to hear what you've been watching, what you loved, what you hated, let me know everything with a comment down below. Let's kick off with what was probably my favourite film of the month and what I'm already considering for my best films of 2023 list, Polite Society. I absolutely love this film, it's funny, it's emotional, the editing is fantastic, it's the story of two sisters from a Pakistani family in London and while their family and acquaintances want them to stick to their cultural traditions, the two sisters defy them completely. One just dropped out of art school and the other wants to become a stunt woman. And the situation precipitates when the older sister ends up seriously dating and potentially marrying in into an arranged marriage, something which triggers the younger sisters to set off on a mission to stop this from happening. Trust me, just watch this film, it's fantastic and I've already seen it on many lists of best films of 2023 so far. Another film I enjoyed watching is an older title, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, starring Ethan Hawke and the late Philip Seymour Hoffman as two brothers who come up with a plan to rob a jewellery store but things take a disastrous turn. As the events unfold we also discover more about the life of these two brothers and their family and although at first it might appear as a straightforward crime thriller there is a lot of drama and it is undeniable that Philip Seymour Hoffman was one of the best actors of our generation. I also caught up with some of the more popular new releases, for example I watched the Super Mario Bros movie. It's fun, I like the animation but my reaction to it was um, what most people felt about it. It's fun but there is not much going on in the story. It's more of an introduction to Mario's world, he just travels across the different lands and except for some fight races and fights there's not much else going on. This film gave me the feeling of being more of a setup for future spin-offs. What I loved about this film was Jack Black's Bowser, he was perfect for the role and I was laughing out loud in all of his scenes. Another recent release I caught up with is uh, The Pope's Exercise, Exercise, <laughs> Exorcism, Pope's Exorcist, starring Russell Crowe as um, uh, Father Armoth. Armoth, I can't say anything today. This film isn't as bad as expected, I think <laughs> the memes played a big role in giving it a bad reputation. But it also doesn't offer anything new from the countless exorcism movies that are produced every year. In this film the priest is called to help a family in Italy who are dealing with a demonic presence and well the rest of the film is more or less predictable. I also watched 65, the new futuristic Adam Driver sci-fi movie in which he is stranded on a weird planet inhabited by all sorts of prehistoric creatures that try to attack him. I think this was trying to be the next big box office hit and sci-fi movie but it was forgotten quite quickly, mostly because there's nothing really memorable about it. I guess yes the CGI is okay and some dinosaur scenes are scary but that's about it, it'll be forgotten very soon. Next up I watched Mafia Mamma starring Toni Collette, an actress who I adore. And I've got to admit it, this film is funny. A lot of films set in Italy tend to fall in the same stereotypes, the same cliches but this film makes a lot of irony of them. Basically Toni Collette has to travel to Italy when out of the blue she finds out she is the next in line in succession to a mafia family, basically making her the next big boss in her clan. But she is the typical American tourist who has a very different vision of Italy and falls in love with all that side of it and all of that clashes with what her clan wants. It's a very light-hearted film but it's also a fun watch. Then because for work we were working on the new Equalizer movie, Equalizer 3, I caught up with the first two chapters um, that I never watched. In both films Denzel Washington plays a former... I'm not really sure what his title is, a secret agent, a marines, I don't know, he plays a, a former important high-ranking military person but now he's retired, he works at a hardware store but he still tries to help out weak defenseless people who are bullied and mistreated by others so he carries out revenge on them. This eventually leads him into bigger troubles which I will not reveal. These titles are not my genre of film but if you're into the John Wick action violent sequences then these are the films for you. I then finally finished watching The Lunchbox and Indian film I had started multiple times in the past but I never finished. As you know in the last few years I've been watching a lot of Indian films, I actually have a spreadsheet with all your recommendations and while many of these titles are action movies what I prefer watching are uh, the more slow paced dramas showcasing realistic down to earth the lifestyle in India. For example this film The Lunchbox shows two complete strangers in Mumbai who end up getting to know one another when their food delivery service with the Dabawalas gets mixed up. 
As I was mentioning, I love these more slow paced Indian dramas with more daily life stories because I love seeing realistic down to earth depictions of the Indian society. I also watched another Indian film you had suggested, Iga by SS Rajamouli, the director of RRR. And I can definitely see some similar similarities between the two films also because they share the same cinematographer. Iga in Telugu means fly, and it's the story of a man who, after being murdered, returns under the form of a fly to carry out vengeance. This film definitely doesn't have the same realism as The Lunchbox, but it was also interesting. I especially love the fly's POV when he is transformed. I also watched a couple of Italian films this month. The first one wasn't bad, it was atrocious. It's called Trepiani, Three Floors, and it stars quite a few famous Italian actors, including Riccardo Scamarcio, who used to only be famous here in Italy, but who is now famous abroad. Uh, he's even like in the John Wick films. Anyway, Trepiani is the story of different families who are each going through d different trouble. Let's, let's put it like that, from cheating to troubled teenagers, but the delivery was appalling. I don't think I've seen such bad acting in quite a few years. It was painful to watch not recommended. The other Italian film I watched was Denti da Squalo, uh, tran which translated is um, Shark Teeth. As a matter of fact, uh, the protagonist of the film is a kid from a poor background who's grieving the loss of his father and who discovers a sort of abandoned villa with a shark in the pool. This leads him to meeting the people who look after the villa and he makes some friends and enemies because of this discovery. This film has great cinematography, the locations were beautiful, but the way the story is built doesn't hold up and apart from a couple of actors the rest of the delivery wasn't very convincing. Moving on, I watched um, Evil Dead, the 2013 version. I haven't watched the new Evil Dead Rises yet, um, and I had to watch something from the previous chapter sooner or later. I knew these films were supposed to be gory, but I definitely wasn't expecting them to go that hard. The story of Evil Dead follows a group of people who end up attacked by a dark presence at a remote cabin they're staying at. I probably can't describe what happens to them to avoid the yellow dollars, but basically they end up being tortured and hurt in every possible way. I was curious about the new film and now I am even more. I then rewatched Unorthodox, a Netflix miniseries I had seen when it had come out a couple of years ago and which I enjoyed just as much the second time round. Unorthodox is the true story of a young woman who escaped an ultra-orthodox Jewish community in New York, so it shows her life living in the community, how much she struggled to fit in, and then the harsh confrontation with reality wants out of it. On the one hand, this series is really touching and it shows how in, even in really modern environments like New York City, people are living in ways that others would consider absurd. On the other hand, Orthodox Jews have come forward and said that is one person's experience, that this series gives Orthodox Jews a bad name in general, and a lot of it is exaggerated. So I guess we have to see all sides of the situation. Speaking of sides to a situation, in the wake of King Charles's coronation, I watched um, Harry and Meghan, the Netflix documentary about Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle, their life in the British royal family and their exit from it. There would be a lot to say about this documentary and uh, the context in general, but I don't want to run too long about it. Briefly summed up, Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle decided to leave the royal lifestyle as it just wasn't for them. The problem was that they did it in a very confusing manner. Harry is late Princess Diana's son and he's always expressed his frustration with paparazzi and the pressure of the media, understandably so as uh, Diana actually died in a car chase being chased by paparazzi. So a lot of the documentary in which mostly Meghan talks and complains is about wanting to have their privacy and not be bothered by the media but they did this by writing books about the topic, making podcasts, going to opera, having a whole documentary about it. See what I mean? Also, I was curious about this documentary to really hear their side of the story, to uh, receive some new information, but nothing really new was provided. It was mostly just them sitting in these mansions, complaining about, about the interest in the media, and just being completely detached from reality. I then watched Shailene Woodley's new film, To Catch a Killer, which, I guess was okay. It's a story of the police hunt for a mass murderer and Shailene's character is recruited to help profile this killer who is very elusive. Overall it's a pretty decent crime thriller although I don't really expect it to to go down in, in the history of crime thrillers. It probably won't be memorable in the long run. I then watched a crime miniseries called Inside Man, which was very disappointing. I usually enjoy dark British crime series, 
and there was some great acting here but the story just didn't hold up. The protagonist is portrayed by David Tennant, he is a vicar who while trying to hide something for a friend ends up lying to the point he gets himself in big trouble which he absolutely didn't have to. The whole plot is built on, built on this premise which just wouldn't happen in real life. And while all that is going on, on the other side of the pond a death row inmate consults on difficult crime cases which I don't know how could be legally possible. And these two storylines eventually come together. I really don't think I made you want to watch it from that description. I then watched Superbad, a film I am sure I'd already seen in the past. I recognised so many scenes. I just don't think I ever sat down and watched it all together from beginning to end. This film perfectly nails the loser, teenager, silly comedy movie genre. It has a great fun storyline, hilarious delivery. It even gets a bit risky in some scenes. They just don't really do films like this anymore. This is a proper 2000s comedy movie. Uh, it's the story of a group of loser friends who are trying to impress girls, get to parties, but everything they do just goes completely wrong. Another early 2000s comedy I never watched entirely is Legally Blonde, which I finally completed. This is one of Reese Witherspoon's most famous roles as this young woman who appears to be just the dumb blonde when she goes to college but who we find out has way more personality than that. I then watched She Is Love, a film which I still have to figure out because I found it completely pointless and I saw that every single review basically agrees with me. Basically a woman goes to stay at a hotel where she meets her ex-husband and the whole film is them awkwardly trying to address this situation and talk about it with his new partner. It's just awkward and the delivery was barely believable. But speaking of bad films, I watched The Greasy Strangler. Now this film sells itself a lot on being experimental and weird and quirking, you just don't get it. But audiences didn't react to it in that way, they didn't like it, found it weird and pointless. It's the story of a man who loves Greece, really loves it in all ways and who is also a serial killer, the Greasy Strangler, who covers himself in Greece while committing his crimes. In addition to this, during the day he constantly fights with his son, tries to steal his girlfriend, lies to people. He is just a nasty person. I'll leave it up to you to form your own opinion on it. I then watched Nicolas Cage as a weapons dealer in Lord of War. If you like War Dogs uh, with Jonah Hill and Miles Teller, you will probably enjoy this film. It's based on the lives of different arms dealers and just as in War Dogs, it shows you the crazy length some business people are willing to go in order to make their profit. I then watched West Beirut, a Lebanese film set in the 70s and which focuses on the life of a family, in particular the teenage son, during the Lebanese Civil War. This film kicks off in a sort of Ferris Bueller style as the kids joke about not having to go to school because of the conflict and then slowly shows the impact of the war, of course all while the protagonist is going through the usual normal issues a teenager would face. But May ended with a completely different film, Encanto. I realised recently that I still have to catch up with uh, some of Disney's latest animated movies like Luca, Strange World, Raya and of course Encanto. I can definitely see why this film was so successful, it really is a magical movie and I don't understand why Disney often goes climbing around, getting itself into all sorts of controversies when they are so good at creating original content. Encanto is set in Colombia and follows a family in which all members have magical powers except the protagonist but she is the one who eventually has to set off on a mission to save her whole family. But with that, we have reached the end of today's list. I would love to hear what you think about these films I watched, these series. Uh, I would love to hear what you've been watching, what you loved, what you hated. Let me know everything with a comment down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.